I've spent the last couple of weeks playing with all 39 DLC characters in Shinobi Striker, so I could tell you which ones are worth your money. I've even created a character card for each one of them, so you can see what I think of their ultimate and their jutsu, as well as whether they bring something bonus, like a new substitution jutsu or a new weapon with a unique moveset. I turn those ratings into numbers and punch them into the spreadsheet, and it spits out the character's place on the tier list. Now, my ratings are based on how strong a jutsu is, but it's more than that. It's about how creative they are, how fun they are, to use. After all, any balance patch can nerf a jutsu and at that point you may feel like you just wasted your money. So don't be surprised if I give an A rating to some top tier jutsu, it just means that I don't think they are very fun or creative. And we'll start this whole thing with attack types. Down at the D tier, the worst DLC you could get is Killer B. Octopus Hug isn't awful, though it's a bit situational. His ultimate just does the same or worse as others in the game. And Acrobat Technique just isn't strong enough for a parry. You can get the damage that does plus some other effects with an actual jutsu that doesn't require to be parried. And that's the only D tier attack type, so we move up to C tier where we have Hashirama. Two solid jutsu, though they're both kind of flawed, and unfortunately the ultimate is simply too inconsistent. He's also the only C tier character, so we move up again this time to the B tier where we have Konohamaru. Pretty much the same scores as Hashirama, like solid jutsu but situational, bad ultimate, but then he comes with a unique weapon for the fence type, so he gets a bonus point for that. Extra value on your DLC for the same price. Obito is also right here on B tier, once again, bad ultimate, but the beam is somewhat creative, even though it revealed a massive flaw with how Shinobi Striker is built, making it kind of situational. But a very solid jutsu with Cross Lantern, plus a new ninja tool with Truth Seeker Warped. And lastly on the B tier we have Minato from back in season 1, and personally I'm not a big fan of how inconsistent his second jutsu is, but the first jutsu gives you a free escape and he has a very good ultimate that are just gonna carry him to the top of B tier. And on the A tier we only have one attack type and that is Might Guy. He has no bad jutsu, his ultimate might be a bit situational, since it takes a while for it to charge and it guarantees that you die by the end of it, there are definitely some better picks for attack types, but sometimes this one is worth it. And I am a big fan of Youthful Roar, plus dynamic entry is just incredibly reliable. And then we have our S tier attack type, starting with Baryon Mode Naruto, who is only slightly held back by Tailbreaker, because that's a bit situational too. The other two jutsu are super versatile, plus he comes with a substitution jutsu as a bonus. And I put Kawaki ahead of Baryon Mode, because even though he's only got one s rank jutsu in my opinion, the others aren't bad, and he doesn't just bring a new substitution with emergency exit, which is fantastic by the way, kinda meta in this season. He also brings a cool ninja tool that both attack and defense types can use. But in this video we're going even further beyond, and we have, for the first time, the S plus tier. That's right, there are so many S tier DLC in Shinobi Striker right now, that I felt like I had to create a whole new tier to shout out to the truly special ones. And first up, is Adult Naruto. S rank Jutsu and Ultimate, B rank for the other Jutsu, which just means I think it's good but situational, and two bonus points for having an accessory with a unique buff and a ninja tool as well. But he's not the only S plus character here because Shisui is gonna join him at the top, and I'll just say it right now, Shisui is gonna be the number one DLC in this whole tier list. No other character from any other type is gonna score as highly as he does. Oburoguruma may have seen better days, but Halo Dance got super buffed and it works with a lot of Jutsu now. Koto Amatsukami is still the ultimate that you just press the button to win the game. The only reason it's A rank is because I don't think it's that fun to use, but that's a top tier for sure. And he gets so many bonus points from his substitution, Swift Step, which is one of my favorites. And let's not forget, an absolute godlike weapon for range types, this was my main weapon for ages. And those bonus points are just gonna carry him above everyone else on this list. If you're an attack type, these are the DLC I'd recommend getting, and if you want to invest in the season pass as an attack main, I'd recommend getting season 2. Because because even though you get the worst DLC in the game, you also get an A rank and an S plus, and you might want to buy Shisui separately. And before we move on to all the other classes, here's a quick word from a top tier sponsor. This video is brought to you by Raycon. You may have heard me talk about Raycon before and thought something like, whoa, the same audio quality but half the price of other big brands? That's exactly right, and that's why Raycon sold 3 million of their previous everyday earbuds, but now they just launched their upgraded model. These are the new everyday earbuds. They come in different colors and have a bunch of new cool features, such as quick charging. You can get up to an hour and a half of battery time with just 10 minutes of charging time. But my personal favorite new feature is multi-point connectivity. That means that these earbuds can be connected to two devices at the same time. So I can be using them for gaming and still have them connected to my phone. Someone calls me, it's right there in my ear. I'm immersed in the game, but I'm ready for any emergency. 
just bad thoughts, I guess. Plus, it's got all the stuff that made the everyday earbuds best sellers to begin with. So, if you've been thinking about Raycons, now is the best time to jump in. They are giving you a 20% discount plus free shipping if you use my link by Raycon.com slash Globku. And as usual, they come with a 30-day happiness guarantee. Totally risk-free, so make sure to check it out. The link is down below. And thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into range types, who recently got a lot of love with Season 7. And that's good, because things weren't great for range types for a while. Starting at the D tier, Kakashi Double Sharingan was the laziest DLC they have ever released. They basically said, here's a lightning blade and here's a Kamui. Oh, and a god-awful ultimate. Kamui ended up being the one thing that has some situational use. The rest? There are usually better options out there. And we're actually skipping the C tier, because I don't think there are any C tier range types. That's how bad Kakashi was. At the bottom of B tier though, we have Haku. Haku has some cool jutsu, but they all have a limited use. Crystal Ice Mirrors is a cool ultimate though, you can use it when someone jumps you. And he also brings a unique substitution too. Then we have Orochimaru, I do not like his ultimate, but I like his jutsu a lot. Even if they're not useful in every kind of situation. Wind Breach actually grew on me a lot, it's a great snipe, but the smallest bit of movement and you're actually missing that. Plus, he also brings a unique substitution. And then we have Madara, who you may think is too low on this tier list, but just remember how awful his ultimate is. Plus, he brings no subs or ninja tools, meaning you're paying for a full DLC price for a very good jutsu and another one that's kind of situational. That is a solid B tier for me. Moving up to the A tier, we find Nagato. Now, this may be my bias speaking, but I love Shurado. It's not the strongest jutsu to use, but I like the creativity. I love how unique it is. It turns you into a missile machine. The rest I find quite situational, but that makes Nagato a solid A tier. But at the top of A, he's been there since season 1, Tobirama, the second Okage, is just a must-have for range types. He has no bad jutsu, it's only a matter of how versatile they are, and his jutsu are like nothing else the game has to this day. Incredibly solid DLC. Moving up to the S tier though, you may have noticed that no season 7 has shown up yet, well, just wait a little longer, because now it's time for Adult Sasuke. For a while this was actually my favorite DLC in the whole game, and I'm still in love with all you can do with Heavenly Hand Power. Infinite potential, that's what you have when you can simply swap positions with your opponent. What kind of situation are you going to put them in? That is completely up to you. Flame Lightning is way better than I used to give it credit for, and even his ultimate might not be my range type favorite anymore, but it still has its uses. Plus, he brings a bonus jutsu, he is the only character that will give you 4 jutsu in total instead of 3. You cannot go wrong with this guy. But he's not the best range type DLC anymore, in fact, he's not even top 3 at this point. Sasori broke into the top 3 immediately immediately with jutsu that are incredibly creative. Shame about that ultimate being so bad, he could have been so much higher, but he gets a ton of bonus points for that range type weapon. He essentially made puppeteers possible years after Shinobi Striker came out, and it's such a good weapon for range types too. The second best range type DLC is one we've had for a while. Temari. Not a single bad jutsu on her, in fact, two of my favorites for range types belong to her. Plus, she has a weapon for defense types that has a unique feature of throwing projectiles. But the number one range type DLC has to be Karma Progression Boruto. And that's without any bonus points, just pure go to jutsu, period. That's all this guy needed. And that gives us this tier list for range types. I'll make sure to put all the class types together at the end of the video, I just thought this would be more useful if you're looking for a specific type. And for range types, if you want to buy a season pack, I would definitely get season 7 for these two guys right here. The fast types have been eating well for a while, but it wasn't always like this. I mean, I don't have any D tiers for the fast types to be honest, but I got Hiruzen at the bottom of C tier. Earth Dragon Bullet has its uses, but the rest of the kit is pretty bad. And season 1 also had Jiraiya, who I put at the top of C. And while I do enjoy Toad Oil, I find his ultimate to be rarely useful over his other ults. And Needle Jizo might be good, but it's not that different from Petrification Jutsu, so creatively, it kind of brought nothing to the game. Moving up to the B tier, you may be surprised to find Neji here, but if you look at his stats, you'll realize that you get Neji for a Zan Strike and very little else. Obito, kind of the same, honestly. Flame Formation is really good, Kamui has its uses, and his ult is okay, I guess. Sasuke Last Battle is also here, which surprised even me, but that's what the numbers gave me. And I guess the reason why is because I really didn't like his ultimate. Flying Thrust is okay, but you basically get Sasuke for Susano Armor and his substitution Time Space Hop. That said, Time Space Hop is not exclusive to Sasuke, 
Sasuke anymore, so that wasn't enough to carry him above the B tier. Moving up to A, we have reanimated Minato, who has a very solid loadout. I am not the biggest fan of his ultimate, but he has a ninja tool that can be used by all class types, and it's a really sick teleport, so he deserves a couple of bonus points for that alone. Zabuza is probably the first character that I think about when I think defense types in Shinobi Striker. He is just incredibly solid. He's got some good jutsu, but no bonus points for extras, so that is gonna be an A tier for him. Slightly better than him, I have Boruto Karma. I don't think his jutsu are as good as Zabuza's, but I think his ultimate is one of the best in the game, and he brings a unique substitution jutsu as well. And then moving up to the S tier, we have Ishiki. His loadout is quite decent, but he gets to the S tier almost just on bonus points, because he also brings time space hop and a new unique ninja tool for defense types, which is probably my favorite ninja tool for that class right now. But defense types also go above and beyond, they have an S plus character, and that is the brand new young Gara. Gara has one of the best jutsu for defense types in the entire game. And the rest of the kit is so creative too, everything is so unique, they even made the Shukaku playable. And if controlling him wasn't so janky and awkward, I would have made that an S tier ultimate as well. But on top of the solid loadout, he also has a ninja tool for defense and range types that I found to be really good for both. So Gara is the best defense type DLC in my opinion. If you want to buy a season for defense type characters, I recommend getting season 3 for those two characters right there, and then maybe you buy Gara separately. Last but not least, heal types have had some of the most consistently good DLC throughout this game's lifespan, and I think that will show during this tier list. At the bottom though, we have Eno. And not even because she's bad, I just think mind transmission healing actually makes the game worse. It's boring to play with this jutsu because all you do is hide and charge the cooldown time to heal everyone in the map, and it's boring to play against it because if the enemy team has it, you have to constantly hunt the healer. And when playing with randoms, people don't always realize this, so it just makes the game worse for both teams in my opinion. The rest of the kit, I think it's fine. Moving up to C tier, we have Mr. Situational himself, Onoki. Both of his jutsu have some uses, they're just very situational. His ultimate is pretty bad though, but he brings a new substitution to make up for it. Up on the B tier, we find Great Ninja War Sakura. I like how she made combat healers more viable, but since healing got nuked, all of her jutsu ended up being a lot more situational. They're not the usual picks, but you can still make them shine under the right circumstances. In front of her, I have Tsunade. Now, I don't like Nervous Rupture, because the game already had Chakra Scalpel, and I just think that's a better jutsu. But everything else is a top tier jutsu. I kid you not, Heavenly Foot of Pain is probably the best jutsu in the game for fighting against other players. The only reason I don't make it an S tier is because it's not that creative, it's, it's just a jumping kick. But this thing does everything. Honestly, it, it does too much if you ask me. But moving up to A tier, we have the most recent heal type DLC, Kaguya. Aside from one bad jutsu, her kit is phenomenal. Shifting dimensions was something I didn't even think was possible in this game, but they pulled it off somehow. And on top of that, she has a unique substitution too. Shame about that one jutsu holding her back. And at the S tier, we start with Naruto Last Battle. Heal types have a lot of S tiers, by the way. But Truth Seeker Orb remains one of the best jutsu for heal types in the entire game. And Naruto also has a very solid ultimate, plus a unique substitution. All good points for this character. Next, we have Six Paths Madara, who similarly has a really good kit, including a great weapon for heal types and a unique ultimate that you just press the button to win. It requires team coordination, but come on, the sky changes color. It's not that hard. Mei is also near the top of S tier. Water Pillar is one of the best jutsu that you could get as a heal type. The Vapor Ultimate is still one of my favorite jutsu in the entire game, and she has a unique weapon for defense types as a bonus. But the best heal type DLC, in my opinion, is Reanimated Itachi. Yasaka Beads is hands down one of the best jutsu in the game, and Izanami is not only good, it's incredibly creative. You actually create a time loop for the entire lobby with this one. Plus, he has a really good substitution jutsu just to top it all off. Now here's the heal type tier list, if you want to buy a season pass as a heal type, I think you get the most value with season 4, but you also get the most jutsu with season 2, even though I don't think they're as good as season 4's jutsu. So up to you, season 2 if you want more, or season 4 if you want better. And with that, we're gonna join all the DLC together in a single tier list, and even though range types and heal types have some very good DLC, I don't think any of them have quite cracked that S plus tier spot yet. And what this list has shown me is that DLC is a lot more consistent now than he used to be. I mean, if you look at the two bottom tiers, these are all season 1 and 2 characters, and then Kakashi, the first character from season 3, but let's ignore that. Back then, DLC felt like much more of a risk. You actually didn't know if you were getting something good or bad, but I feel like the base quality nowadays has just risen so much. Also, they're giving us more with each DLC, a lot more characters have new substitutions or ninja tools, just something else besides the usual jutsu, and I think all of that adds more value. This makes me really excited about the future of this game. They 
have teased a little bit of what's to come and it seems they're adding animals in some way, but more importantly, custom lobbies are finally coming. This game is still eating good all these years after. And you could be hearing good with today's sponsor if you go to buyraycon.com slash to get that 20% off with free shipping on anything you buy. Hope this video was helpful and if you want more Shinobi Striker, check out the best builds you could make right now for each class. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.